Hello everyone and welcome to Quan Pi. Right, so what's been happening recently? We derive the diffusion equation and we then determine its fundamental solution using the similarity method. We then derive the diffusion convection equation which has got an additional convection term but we haven't seen its solution yet so we're going to solve this equation now. It's going to be easy as we already know the solution of the diffusion equation so we're going to rely on the similarity of this equation with the diffusion equation. Let's recall an example of a physical process that this equation tries to describe. Remember we assume some medieval guy dropped pollutant in a river and the pollutant was carried by the river and it diffused as well. Now compared to the diffusion, the x coordinate is in a way growing over time with the speed of the river. If the velocity of the river is equal to mu, then the distance it travels in time interval t will be equal to mu times t. This is the familiar distance equals velocity times duration formula. Now if you were to run along the river at the same speed, then you will only see the diffusion. So if we introduce a variable transformation to reflect this, we will get the diffusion equation, which we know how to solve and we can then transform the solution back into our problem. So we define a new variable y and set it equal to x minus mu times t. So it takes the speed out of the river. We represent the f as a function of this new variable with a tilde and the two functions are equal by definition. Now for later on we will be needing the derivative of this transformation so let's calculate the derivatives of y with respect to x and t they're just equal to 1 and minus mu. Now we are ready to transform the differential equation. First let's transform the derivative with respect to x to the derivative with respect to the new variable y, we just use the chain rule. And as the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 1, we get an identity. So the two derivatives are equal. The second derivatives will be equal as well then. Now we calculate the derivative with respect to t, which is slightly tricky because f is a function of y and t but y is a function of t as well. So when t changes, it will have a direct impact on f and an indirect impact through y. So we use the total derivative. Substituting minus mu for the derivative of y with respect to t, we get. Now we can substitute the derivatives into the differential equation to get. So the convection terms cancel. And as expected, the equation reduces to the diffusion equation. We will need to transform the initial condition as well, which is the situation at time 0. But y and x are equal when t is equal to 0, so we don't have much to do there. Now we know the solution of this equation from the previous video, so we write the solution in terms of y, where m is the number of particles at the starting location. And now we just need to substitute for y to get the solution in terms of the original variable x. Let's see what the solution means visually. Assume we dropped a large number of particles at location x equal to 0. We will represent the pure diffusion by the blue color and the convection diffusion by the red color. So as time progresses, the particles spread. And additionally, under the convection diffusion, the particles are carried to the right by the river as well. To see how the convection carries the diffusion, let's split the solution into diffusion and the traveling part. We expand the square and then split the exponential, leaving just x squared in one of them so that we can compare and contrast against the diffusion solution. So the leading term is what the PDE guys would call the traveling wave with velocity mu divided by 2. And we recognize the diffusion solution. So you can see the diffusion is carried by the traveling wave. 
This should look a lot more familiar by the way, if you have watched the Maja change video, which explains the Gersana theorem and the Rajan Nikodim derivative. To see the informal connection with the Gersana theorem, let's rearrange the solution a bit. First, let's assume that d is equal to 1 divided by 2. d will depend on the nature of the physical system, but we are interested in the maths only now. So we can assign it any positive value. 1 divided by 2 simplifies it, so we go with 1 divided by 2. Remember, this is how we got the standard Brownian motion and the Brownian motion video. So the equation simplifies as expected. Now we simplify the expression and the first exponential. And now dc is in the same form as the radon Nicodem derivative. And if you replace m by 1, meaning we have just one particle, then the rest of the expression is just the density of the standard Brownian motion. And we know from the Gersonov theorem that the density of the standard Brownian times this radon Nicodem will produce a process with drift equal to mu. So it is a big circle or a big pie and we must stop here before the circle gets any bigger. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next.